Let's take a closer look behind this iconic organ facade and see the inner workings of the organ. We'll also meet one of the people that keep this organ in tip-top shape. We're here behind the facade in the organ case of the Salt Lake Tabernacle, and I'm with Robert Pohl. Robert, what's your official title here? Tabernacle Organ Technician. Okay, and <laughs> how long have you been doing that? Uh, it, I will be employed by the church now this November, 39 years. Oh, my goodness. What and does it take to keep this organ in shape? What, what, how do you prepare it for a performance? Well, typically it's, a, it's just an ongoing uh, process of continual maintenance and tuning. The process involves uh, using a reference stop or rank of pipes. This is a rank here. Um, and we use, in fact, this is the reference for this section of the organ here. And uh, then we tune everything to that. And what's this uh, tool? You're waving around. This is a, a tuning knife, typical tuning knife. It has a sharp edge. It's got a lot of mass to it. And here it has a little hook. And if you look at the side of it, the hook is the same kind of thing as this, like that. So I can use it to uh, pull up on, the, on a slide or knock down on a slide. Or I can tap it up this way or I can knock it down. And just slight movements of the, the tuning collar or tuning slide will cause, if, it, if I knock it down, it makes it shorter and it becomes sharp, sharper. And if I go up, it goes flat. And uh, so we're trying to get them all to be relative to each other. I know from a, a musical standpoint, organs have a personality. Uh, from your standpoint, maintenance technician, does this organ have a personality? Does it have a, a, a feel to it that's unique? Clay Christiansen, our emeritus organist, used to say the organ had gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes even th things are even I inexplicable. Do you work around the gremlins or do you try to get them out? I try to get them out as best I can, okay. uh, but sometimes you get to a point where you just say, you know, there's a point of diminishing returns and I'm done. <laughs> Although there have been occasions when I wanted to just take a pipe and throw it out <laughs> and say, we're finished with you. <laughs> we'll find another one. <laughs> the pipes that are different are these right here. These reed pipes is where we spend most of our time because this is a brass tongue that beats against that brass tube. It has a flat surface, an opening in it. It's kind of like a clarinet mouthpiece. And, and so you move this up and down, it's like the lip of the clarinetist. Uh -huh. And it changes the length of that reed beating. And then you can also move the scroll up or down. And they have inverse re, uh, relationships on the effect of the volume of the pipe. So uh, if I go sharp, it goes soft here. If I go sharp here, it goes loud. Okay. And so every time we tune them, we have to be careful that we don't make it go loud, soft, loud, <laughs> as you can play up the keyboard. Keep, keep the yeah. <laughs> so we do a lot with this. If you get a little speck of dirt in there, carry a dollar bill. I tried to convince my boss that $100 bills clean better, but <laughs> he didn't buy that. These. Uh, <laughs> You just slide this down inside there and hold it and pull it out. And the dollar bill will actually pull the dirt with it instead of uh, leaving a residue there and clean it right out. It really is a, an amazing <laughs> machine, isn't it? 